Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of The Bride with White Hair, a Hong Kong wishy genre bender from 1993 that stars Leslie Chung, Bridget Lin, and Francis Ng. So we meet our protagonist, a man played by Leslie Chung, at the beginning. He has been waiting on a mountain for 10 years to acquire a majestic flower that blooms every 20 or so years and can cure any illness. We're not really sure why at this point of the film he wants this flower. Then we go into flashback mode and get some backstory involving our main character during his childhood years, which involves some uh, quaint humor along the way. And then we see during those flashbacks that he's a bit of a troublemaker. Then we're transported to his adult years by about the 15 minute mark, and we see that he is still causing a bit of trouble. But he is eventually tasked to lead a coalition force which is formed by the eight major orthodox martial arts sects to destroy an evil cult who is, that is led by Francis Inc. But things get complicated, of course, when Bridget Lin shows up as a badass assassin with a deadly whip. So when I first saw The Bride with White Hair back in the day, I was one of the few people who was not especially impressed with it. I was not a big fan of this movie after my first viewing. However, after rewatching it multiple times over the years, I have to kind of question what I was thinking back then because I thoroughly enjoyed it the second time around and subsequent viewings. I still have a few criticisms, but they're not as problematic as I once assumed. I think my problem was that the first time I saw this movie, I was just getting into you know Hong Kong fantasy flicks from the early 90s, and I was simply not used to the style of these kinds of films. So I had a little bit of trouble processing them because they get pretty wild and they're quite different if, uh, you know, if you've been restricted to a lot of American films like I was at the time. It's like trying a scotch whiskey for the first time. You know, the taste might be a little bit off-putting at first, but once you develop a palate for it, there's some great stuff out there. And in like manner, I had to develop a, a, a palate for these kinds of films and I appreciated them more as I saw them more. Now, one thing you'll notice about The Bride with White Hair is that, right from the start, it is beautifully shot. Very colorful and vibrant. Of course, there's a lot of cloth that waves in the breeze, which is something that uh, a lot of these fantasy flicks from the, the early 90s used. But it's, uh, it's a nice touch. There's also lots of fog on display, two things that frequently appear in these kinds of films. Now, the party, there's like a party scene involving the cult near the beginning, it's pretty cool in terms of its set design and tribal rituals and costumes. So every aspect of this film looks great. Also, most of the story takes place at night, which adds some atmosphere. It's a very visually compelling film. There's no question about that. Now, this was directed by a, a guy named Ronnie Yu, who seems to have, have had like a hit or miss career from what I've seen. You know, he eventually went to Hollywood and made Bride of Chucky and Freddy vs. Jason, but then he returned and uh, directed Fearless and Saving General Yang, which are two solid films. He has not made much of anything at all since 2013, so he may have retired. Now, all three leads are good in this. Leslie Chung and Bridget Lin are impressive in their separate scenes, and I like their chemistry when they came together. You know, this movie shifts to like a sensual romantic vibe during the middle section, and their performances help to make that work. Francis Ng gives a delightfully demented performance as one half of conjoined twins who lead the evil cult. Very interesting scenes with him. Very nutty and out of his mind in his uh, portrayal of the character, but it works and is very entertaining to watch. So let's address the, uh, the three problems that I originally had with this film. The first time I watched it, and uh, how I feel about them now. Number one. So one of the problems I originally had with The Bride with White Hair is the execution of the fight scenes. Now, you know, the characters reference martial arts throughout the film, but there's basically no martial arts present at all in the film. You know, we do not get any choreographed hand-to-hand -hand fighting or sword fighting in a traditional sense, or at least not much of it. There are a few fight scenes, but they focus more on fantasy-like powers that are, you know, primarily simplistic single attacks. 
you know, like a whip attack or something like that. So do not go into this expecting something like the Jet Li version of Feng Sai Yuk from 1993, because you will be disappointed if you're expecting that. And I think I went in with that expectation originally. But judging the film on what it is, not what it wants, or not what you want it to be, or what I wanted it to be, is pretty important here. Because the attack scenes in The Bride with White Hair are still pretty entertaining from a fantasy perspective. I mean, we get body explosions, decapitations, multiple dismemberments, and a few neat abilities along the way. There are some neat maneuvers that are showcased. There's a few during the final fight that I liked quite a bit as well. So, overall, I think that the fighting is good in this, just not in a traditional martial arts sense. Number two, this film does occasionally use what I call the slow frame rate visuals or techniques that are similar to what Wong Kar Wai used in Ashes of Time and Chungking Express. I generally despise this visual tactic because it creates like a picture show experience that's both distracting and obnoxious. If I were a film producer, I would almost never approve a scene that was shot like this or presented to me in this fashion. I think it's incredibly stupid. But thankfully, it's only used briefly in The Bride with White Hair, so it's not a big problem. But it does, it does show up. Number three, something happens in the story during the final half hour that I still think is a pretty contrived way to uh, write in an escalating conflict. Uh, no spoilers, I won't tell you what happens. But I did feel, even after like multiple viewings in my recent viewing, I still feel it's, it's a little bit forced. You know, based on what we saw in the film up to that point, I was not really convinced that Leslie Chung's character would have reacted that way to that event. So I still find that, find that to be a little bit of a problem. But overall, I very much enjoy The Bride with White Hair, and I, it's one of those films I seem to enjoy it more every time I watch it. It's only 92 minutes long, moves very briskly. There's no wasted time in this. It's considered a classic of Hong Kong cinema, so if you have not seen this, it's another one, unfortunately, that you're going to have to watch. <laughs> you, you do. I know I, there's a lot of movies that I tell you you got to watch. This is another one. It's currently available on Amazon Streaming in the United States. And as always, we'll see you next time.